What is this? You will find out now when he trades video number one starts right now. So if you're like me, a lot of friends and family always ask me, so what do you do? I said I design and sell heat trace systems. And of course, their next question is, so what's heat trace? I go through this long spill about what heat trace is and how does it work. And they say, oh, okay, I understand. And six months later, they ask me, so what do you do? My response, I work for the government. No, what I usually do is just explain to them what I do again and six months later I have to explain it over again. Hello, Deshaun here from the Dale Prentice Company and this is video number one in our six part heat trace series. You may ask what is heat trace? Well, heat trace in a simple form which is a freeze protection application, you'll take a cable like this which is heat trace, you'll take a pipe, you'll install it on the pipe then you'll size the insulation that goes around it properly, you energize it electrically, and in the winter time, your pipes won't freeze. And that's what Heat Trace is. The brand of Heat Trace that I'll be talking about through these six part series is called Raychem, or the company name is Invent Thermal Management. So I'll be interchanging those names, so just make sure you pay attention to that. Raychem and Invent, I'm talking about the same product in the same company. Now let's discuss the different videos that we'll discuss in the series. So the first video in this series is what is heat trace? How does it work and the different types of heat trace? The second video we'll discuss the pros and cons of the different types of heat trace. For the third video, we'll dive in the heat trace components that we use. The fourth video, we'll talk about control methods and also controllers of the heat trace system. Fifth video, we'll switch gears a little bit and we'll talk about snow melt systems, both roof and gutter and also surface snow melt. And then finally, we'll end up with heat trace testing and also heat trace warranties. So first, let's talk about the different types of heat trace. There are generally two types of heat trace. We have constant wattage heat trace and also self-regulating heat trace. Let's talk about constant wattage heat trace first. Constant wattage heat trace is a series circuit. Basically, constant wattage heat trace, as its name applies, when you apply voltage to it, it will remain the same heating output throughout. So let's take this example. Let's say, for instance, it's 32 watts per foot on the heat trace cable. Well, it will remain 32 watts per foot throughout. That makes it very easy to predict what the output will be and your amperage that you'll need. Because it's a constant wattage heater, if you touch or cross it to itself, it will continue to heat in that same area at 32 watts per foot. Eventually, it will fail prematurely. So you can't touch or cross it. The next type of heat trace we're gonna talk about is self-regulating heat trace. Self-regulating alternates up and down depending on the ambient temperature around it or the air temperature around it. Now what I'm going to do is show you this really short video and it'll explain exactly what self-regulating heat trace is and also how it works. And Then I'll come back and give my example as well. So enjoy. Raychem self-regulating heating cables automatically adjust their power output to compensate for temperature changes. The outer jacket, braid, and inner jacket provide mechanical, chemical, and electrical protection. But the magic happens in the conductive core that surrounds the two parallel conductors. As the ambient temperature drops, the core contracts microscopically, and the number of electrical paths through the core increases. More heat is produced. Conversely, as the ambient temperature rises, the core expands and has fewer electrical paths. Less heat is produced. At a certain temperature, almost all electrical paths are disrupted and power output is close to zero. A self-regulating heating cable adjusts its power output along its entire length. That's what makes it a safe and reliable solution for many applications. 
Well, hopefully you enjoyed that particular video. It had a lot of information in there and it was very informative. Now I'm gonna use my example that I like to use when I'm doing presentations. Let's say for instance, you're at a party and you're in a particular room. Now we're gonna use the outer walls of that room as the bus wires of the heat trace cable. We're gonna use the molecules as the people in the room. And when it gets real cold, a lot of times the people or the molecules will come closer together, generating more heat. Now, when it gets too warm in that room, a lot of times those molecules or people will separate, reducing the heat in the room. Well, essentially that's what self-regulating heat trace does when it's energized. Now, self-regulating heat trace is different than constant wattage heat trace in this way. So it regulates up and down depending on the ambient temperature around it. So let's explain this. Usually you will have a rating on the heat trace cable. Let's say five watts or eight watts or 10 watts per foot. So that five watt heat trace cable is based on 50 degrees Fahrenheit. So when it sees 50 degrees Fahrenheit around that heat trace cable, then you should expect five watts per foot or whatever that rating is on the cable. Now, if it is 60 degrees Fahrenheit, that means that you're gonna receive less than five watts per foot. So when the temperature is less than 50 degrees Fahrenheit, let's say 40 degrees, then you will receive a greater output than five watts per foot. So because self-regulating cable is based on the ambient temperature around it, it's very difficult to judge exactly what that output is gonna be on that heat trace cable. So that means we have to size the breaker according to the maximum length of the cable. And we have a chart for that. So now it's time for a pop quiz. Can self-regulating heat trace be crossed or touched with itself? If you answer yes, you would be correct. The reason for this is self-regulating heat trace reacts to the ambient temperature around it. So if it's touch or crossing itself, it will continue to heat in that area. However, when it gets too warm, it'll regulate itself back down, preventing any burnouts. So if you got that correct, great job. Hopefully you enjoyed that video. Now please stay tuned for the next video where we'll talk about the advantages and also disadvantages of self-regulating heat trace and constant wattage heat trace. So until then, this is Deshaun again from the Dell Prentice Company, always reminding you to be safe.